The way honeybees defend themselves against pests and pathogens is very interesting and can be comparable with humans in many different levels. However, there is one aspect of the honeybee immune system that's still a mystery. In this video, I will give you a quick overview about the immune system of honeybees and talk about how the sponsor of this video, Dayland Animal Health, is taking advantage of this research field to develop a very unique product to help the honeybees. Honeybees are constantly under attack by many different pests and pathogens. And this is not a surprise. Inside of a honeybee colony, you can find extremely valuable resources for many kinds of living beings. To defend themselves, honeybees rely on a series of physical, chemical, and behavioral events that are activated by the presence of an invader or the wounding caused by the invader. And these events can be separated in two categories, social immunity and individual immunity. When a microorganism breaks the physical barrier of a honeybee's body, the individual immune system has several ways to recognize invaders and activate different immune pathways. These immune pathways work in combination with each other to create an environment that's not so good for the invader to survive. Some pathways are activated by bacterial infections, other are by fungal infections, but at the end of the day is the combination of the system that creates the harsh new environment for the pathogen. These internal pathways of chemical reactions activate basically two categories of responses, the cellular response and the humoral response. The cellular response, as the name implies, utilizes cells to perform defensive tasks. These cells are hemocytes, and interestingly, they display many structural and functional similarities to the neutrophils, a specific myeloid cells of the mammalian immune system. Depending on the size and quantity of the invader and the kind of hemocytes activated in the process, hemocytes can swallow the microorganism in an event called phagocytosis. If phagocytosis is not enough because there are too many of the microorganism, hemocytes will utilize another approach, forming nodules, which consists of, of attaching as many invaders as possible and aggregating them together, something called nodulation. However, if the invader is too big, several hemocytes can aggregate around the invader's body, forming a layer and kind of suffocating it an event called encapsulation. Together with these specific cells from the cellular response, the humoral response is activated and specific honeybee tissues start to produce molecules to attack these invaders. These molecules are called antimicrobial peptides or AMPs. There are many AMPs out there and each of them be more specific for some kind of invader. Some are more effective against bacteria, other against fungus, etc. And they basically attack the invader attaching to them, helping the cellular response to eliminate the invader. Even though with this very simplified overview, you can see that the honeybee immune system has plenty of weapons against invaders at the individual level. However, sometimes the invaders are strong and able to survive and propagate in enough numbers to make a honeybee sick and killing it. That could happen at any stage of the development of a honeybee and raises a fundamental problem. How to protect the other individuals in the colony from the same fate? That's when the so-called social immunity takes place. Social immunity is the mounting of an anti-parasitic behavior to defend the colony rather than the individual. For example, when an adult honeybee gets sick. On some occasions, it triggers a very interesting behavior, where the sick bee decides that it's better to leave the colony and die alone outside than stay and contaminate all other nest members and put at risk the survival of the colony. This is called altruistic self-removal of unhealthy bees. 
Another interesting social behavior is when the queen bee mate with several drones, the male bee, to generate great genetic diversity within the honeybee colony. This is called polyandry. And research shows that high genetic diversity within a honeybee colony make it much more resistant to infectious diseases. Another example of social immunity that has similarities between bees and humans is the ability to self-medicate. Honeybees collect resins from trees, which is called propolis, and harness their antibiotic properties for use in the side hive. Research shows that the pathogen Nosema serrani is less infectious to the honeybees when honeybees are consuming propolis extracts. Other examples of behaviors include allogrooming, the behavior when the bees clean each other out, hygienic behavior when the bees detect and isolate from the hive sick larvae and pupa, and many other behaviors. So from the social point of view, the main components honeybees use to fight infectious diseases are very logical. One, keep things clean. Number two, identify infected individuals and isolate them from the rest of the colony. And number three, having a genetically diverse society to strengthen the social group. As you could see, the immune system of honeybees has several weapons to fight infectious diseases and can be comparable with humans in many levels, except one. In mammals, we have the innate immune system, which is the one comparable with honeybees at the individual level. However, we also have something very different, the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system is able to mount a response specific to the pathogen attacking us. And not only that, it can also remember it for future infections resulting in a much more effective response in a second time. The ability to train the immune system to quickly mount an attack when faced with the threat from previous experiences is the basis for one of the biggest revolution in medicine, the vaccine. So perhaps the real question here is, are insects lacking an adaptive immune system or we researchers didn't figure that out yet? This is a question that has been around for decades and we don't know much about it, but what we know is this. In a social insect like honeybees, we have something called transgenerational immune priming. When a colony is exposed to a pathogen once, the next generation of bees, for reasons that we don't understand very well, is better prepared for the exposure of that same pathogen again. The next generation of bees develop a strong humoral and cellular response in the presence of the pathogen, which end up protecting the next generation of the honeybees a little bit better. Transgenerational immune priming is a remarkable finding because it demonstrates the existence of a system that acquires and transmits some level of protection to the offspring. The remaining question is how? What are the molecular mechanisms behind such an intriguing defense mechanism and, much more important, what can we humans learn from it? In 2015, researchers from Finland began elucidating this puzzle by showing that vitalogenin, a very important lipoprotein synthesized by the fat bodies of honeybees, play an important role in transgenerational immune priming. Vitalogenin has several functions in the honeybee body, including the role of recognition of pathogens. In this study, the researchers found pieces of pathogens attached to this important lipoprotein in the eggs of honeybees, possibly to confer resistance to future pathogen attacks and also suggesting that vitalogenin played an important role in transgenerational immune priming. It is true that insects lack antibodies, however, it will not be surprising if the honeybees could have adopted alternative methods to pass along the same benefits to their young using similar techniques. The advances of such a discovery could potentially bring the first honeybee vaccine to the market. 
closing one of the significant fundamental differences between the immune system of honeybees and humans. And that's exactly what Daylon Animal Health is working on right now. And I'm very, very excited to see what new discoveries this company will bring to the industry to help honeybees and beekeepers alike. I plan to bring the researchers behind the development of the vaccine to the show and if you're interested in watching the live stream in the future and ask questions, please sign up to our email list link in the description of this video. Click the like button if you enjoyed this content and if you want to know more about bees, please click the thumbnails at the screen right now and the logo to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.